I'm going to be talking to Wissam Gusani, who is the ABB Canada's building automation leader about building automation. So welcome to the interview, Wissam. Thank you for having me. And like, thanks for your focus on this topic as well. Well, this is a little bit getting down into the weeds, but, you know, um, the electrification of uh, buildings, which is taking place, accelerating at a global level, difficult in Canada because we have a lot of existing buildings and we have a colder climate. So heat pumps, you know, work in some areas. We heat, put a heat pump in our house. Love it. Absolutely love it. But it doesn't work in, say, Alberta when it's 30, 40 below. Uh, and there are a lot of, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, industrial buildings that are that are difficult. Why is it important to that we automate uh, buildings? Great question. Um, automating buildings end of the day, when we talk about working on buildings and energy, buildings are amongst the largest contributors to the global energy-related emissions, which is a challenge, but a massive opportunity at the same time. Uh, because if we transform these buildings into smart, self-powered systems, we are basically reshaping how the energy flows in our cities. And uh, when we talk about automation, we talk about... <clears throat> addressing uh, two important to topics. We talk about energy transition today, but let's not forget the energy expansion as well. In both cases, the common denominator is energy efficiency, which is the biggest short-term opportunity to reduce energy consumption. So uh, automating buildings are addressing energy efficiency, sustainability, but also they're bringing unique user experience to the table. Now, I'm really curious. Let, let's put aside emissions for a moment. We talk about that a lot. What we don't talk about is how buildings can be, I think, in the words of your uh, study, uh, self-powered systems that actively manage <laughs> energy flow. I would not think of buildings in that context. Could you explain that for me, please? Very good question. Um, what we do is we need to help our uh end users and and uh, building operators to um, make a use of innovations in a practical and a scalable way, right? And when we say we bring building energy uh, management systems and building automation, we're trying to re to trans to turn real time data into simple, reliable control of heating, cooling, lighting, on site energy. And for instance, what ABB does, we're trying to help our customers to turn smart building ideas into everyday benefits. I mean by that lowering costs, higher uptime, better comfort in the context of Canada. So the Canadian buildings can be cleaner, smarter, and ready for the digital economy. Speaking of the digital economy, um, how far along is the industry now in being able to use buildings as part of demand management for the grid? Uh, you know, so for instance, if there's a peak load and the grid operator say, hey, you know what? Um, it's hot out, everybody's using their air conditioning and we're going to increase the temperature in uh, Markham's house and Wasim's house by three degrees and overall that'll lower the load and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and it'll be you know, easier on the, on the grid. Uh, are we there yet? Um, absolutely. The technology is available today. The technology is available today. What we need to probably work better on is to facilitate the adoption of those technologies yeah. and make sure that the end users have, get and squeeze the best that out of it. Out, uh, and I mean, have the best of the uh, of, of this technology. So we need to work with those uh, businesses in order to help them with the adoption. We want to work closely as well with other players in the market to bring more value to, to those customers and make better use of those systems that we just talked about. We seem, uh, what does that mean in practical terms? Do we need more government policy? Do we need to, you know, like these kinds of technologies are costly to buy up front, but cheaper to operate uh, once you have them. So does that mean that we need, you know, subsidy programs or industrial carbon prices or how do we encourage the adoption of this technology? Absolutely. That that could be part of it. I'll give you another uh, context that could be more related to 
the commercial buildings. And we see it today in Canada, for instance, there are energy as service providers, right? Those companies that fund, deliver and manage the building efficiency and decarbonization projects so customers can upgrade without upfront capital. In that context, for instance, what we do at ABB Canada, we partner up with, with those uh, uh, providers so that we pair our smart electrification and automation technologies with their off-balance sheet fi financing. This will allow cost-constrained customers that you just explained to deploy upgrades now, pay over time from guaranteed energy savings. This is one way. I, I really like that idea. Uh, we've been interviewing, uh, well, I think four or five years ago, we started interviewing any energy as a service providers in the, in the United States. They seemed like they were uh, ahead of Canada in, in doing that. Now we're starting to see that model move into Canada. Is it becoming widespread? Yeah, we see this uh, uh, being more evident in Canada. Uh, we see the market is also uh, growing with more entrepreneurs trying to come up with uh, new models, new business, and they, they want to scale. And for instance, what we do in ABB Canada, we also believe that working in an open ecosystem of partnership with different stakeholders, that brings the best businesses, academia, research, and also entrepreneurship. And uh, especially startups and smaller companies, those are entrepreneurs. There's a lot of Canadian entrepreneurs with proven innovation and they are fast to the market with those innovations. They can benefit from ABB's domain expertise. We work together closely with them to benefit the customers in Canada and our uh, consumers. That raises another interesting question because I've had uh, several companies on. One was based in Costa Rica. One was based in the United States. And mm. these were engineers like yourself who um, who said that, you know what, it's not the cost of the technology anymore. Solar panels, digital controls, batteries, those are all really cheap. That's not the issue. The issue is integration. How do I integrate them into a client's, maybe it's an ice cream factory, maybe it's a multifamily dwelling or a hotel or whatever. How do I do that in such a way that it's a better experience for the customer and they save money at the same time, they're more, they're more efficient. And it seems like that integration piece is the is really mm -hmm. where we're going here is to is to scale up integration, and the technology will be there. Companies like ABB Canada will be there to provide it. Absolutely, and this is a complexity that you mentioned, and we tackle this complexity because we standardized our platforms and we offer interoperable solutions. Interoperable solutions, I mean, they are solutions that would help minimize the strip and replace scenarios. And basically, we are reducing the integration risk and reducing the time to value to customers. When I talk about latest building automation solutions from ABB, those are solutions that are working on very open protocols. They're ready to integrate legacy systems. We don't want customers that want to upgrade their existing facilities to replace all the equipment and do and in, interrupt their operations. We want to help them is to start small, scale fast, and then uh, make use of available open uh, solutions that will in, integrate those legacy equipment uh, in phases. So it's not just about technology, but also it's a process. And this is where our expertise will help our customers as well to follow those processes and, and scale them. We Sam, uh, look out over the next two to five years and uh, do a little crystal ball gazing for me and tell me, where do you see this technology headed in that time frame? Um, I love this question because now we have we see the buzz of, of AI lately, right? And uh, now AI is, is not only becoming a, a player in, in, in this industry, it's also becoming the biggest new energy consumer, right? So we, at ABB, we enable the electricity infrastructure for AI through data centers. We're using, however, the AI as part of the solution to this problem. Because in this case, when we, uh, with our in, <clears throat> investments and focus on those innovation, we try to enhance our products and offerings to enhance efficiency, boost productivity, and help customers promote sustainability. So uh, I believe the industry is moving 
uh, quickly. We don't know the impact of, I, I wouldn't know personally the impact of AI, uh, boom, but I would, but I'm very sure that we are scaling fast and um, we will be addressing a lot of, of uh, things related to governance, transparency, explainability, therefore responsible AI. And that's one of the key focus areas for ABB. Um, we Sam, uh, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate the insights. Appreciate your uh, focus as well on this topic. Thank you for having me.